The Destiny 2 beta is out now. We've already dived into the Homecoming mission, got into Strike, the Inverted Spire, and jumped into the Crucible for some PvP action. If you want to make the most of your early access to the most exciting game of the year, here are our top 10 tips for success in the Destiny 2 beta. 1. Remember to tweak your skill tree. It might all seem utter chaos as you land just as the tower is falling, but take some time to head into your skill tree. Everything is open from the get-go, so switch out your grenades and get that precious triple jump back. This also leads us nicely onto our next point. 2. Really read the skill tree instructions. Seriously, you might think a lot of these skills look familiar, but a lot of them are very different to what you know in practice, are attached to classes and subclasses disparate from where they originated in Destiny 1, and otherwise have a ton of less obvious but powerful functions that can also be synced up for brutally effective strategies. Warlock Voidwalkers can now change their grenades using their super energy for much more powerful explosives and zone control, Dawnblades can air dash and downstrike, and Hunter Arcstriders get a full reload on a successful dodge. 3 find enemy weaknesses. There are all kinds of new foes to take down in the Destiny beta across both the Homecoming First Mission and Inverted Spire, and it's worth noting that there are of course specific ways of taking them down. Specifically, Incinerators, a new kind of Cabal attacker, might want to toast you with their flamethrowers, but aim for their canisters and you won't just take them down, but everyone around them in a joyous fireball. Saying that's my hot take afterwards is absolutely optional. 4. Don't forget your new class abilities. Every Guardian now has two new class abilities to go alongside their grenades, melee and super. A double tap or prolonged press of circle or B will trigger these new tricks and once you do you'll discover a whole lot more versatility and power as well as a few interesting shakeups in traditional class divisions. Dawnblade Warlocks for instance can dodge in mid-air, an ability lifted from the exotic titan armour Twilight Garrison and also lay down an area of effect field for buffing team damage or recovering shields. Make no mistake, these things are game changers and you need to integrate them into your playstyle immediately. Immediately. If you're a hunter, it's also worth saying that you really need to remember to dodge. Whichever of the two hunter dodge abilities you go with, they both come in seriously handy. Dodge with the marksman's dodge as an arc strider and you'll get a sweet automatic reload of your equipped weapon. Or use the gambler's dodge successfully and you'll get an insta melee refill. Nice. 5. Leave no guardian behind. It's a lot easier to now. Stick together and remember to revive. With the inverted spire strikes verticality and jumping puzzles taken into account, and thus its multitudes of opportunities for death, there's a lot of scope for accidentally leaving people behind if you're not conscientious with revives. The inverted spire is a long, rangy strike, and that respawn countdown is more than enough time to get very well separated from the team. Alternatively, you could just wait and spend some time dancing. 6. Juggle those weapons and remember your power ammo. Don't worry, the juggler modifier isn't on, but you're still going to want to try out the different weapons for size. In fact, with Destiny 2's new loadout system in action, managing your weapon set is going to be an even more important part of the game than ever. Now divided into the kinetic, energy and power categories, Destiny 2's new gun ratings offer more freedom. The first two slots being so versatile means that you can equip two pulse rifles at a time, but it also demands you to be more careful. All weapons capable of a one-hit kill, so that's shotguns, sniper rifles, etc., have now been moved to the power category, which replaces the old heavy shelf and comes with similarly limited ammo. So while your options are much greater, you'll need to plan your loadouts more carefully to make sure your guns are sympathetic to each other. With less of the balancing work done for you now and certain options limited in how often you can use them, there's great power to be had, but more careful consideration required to unlock it. Get to grips with Countdown. If you're loading up brand new mode Countdown, here's a quick primer of how it works. Your team of four is either on offence or defence and tasked with planting or defending a bomb. Those on offence are planting the explosives at an enemy base and defending them until things go boom and those on defence are, you guessed it, trying to stop that timer from ticking down to zero. The first team to win six individual explosive rounds are crowned victorious. Of course, it's not that simple. To bring back your teammates back into the fray, you can't just revive them, you'll need a revive token and these can run out. It's also worth noting that the Guardian who cracks open the power ammo is the only one who can get it, so don't go wasting it on someone who isn't going to make the most of that extra oomph. 8. Find those exotic Destiny 2 beta weapons. From what we know so far, there are three exotics to be found in the Destiny 2 beta, Sunshot, Sweet Business and Risk Runner. Sunshot is, as you might expect from the name, a solar hand cannon complete with 150 rounds a minute and can hold eight in the magazine. The only perk we've seen so far is Sunburn, which highlights targets and fires explosive rounds so your foes explode in a shower of solar energy. Next up is Sweet Business, a kinetic auto rifle with 360 rounds a minute and a magazine of 90. Again, the only perk we've seen so far is Payday. This means increased hip fire accuracy and also a handy ability that increases range and rate of fire the longer you squeeze the trigger. 
And finally, you've got Risk Runner, an arc powered submachine gun with a whopping 750 rounds a minute and a magazine of 40. Arc Conductor is your perk here, which means taking arc damage actually increases power of the Risk Runner. When Arc Conductor is active, shots fired have the chance to become Chain Lightning and return ammo. Not bad at all. The good news is that all of these are yours for the taking, but currently the only way we've found so far is with each individual class at the start of the homecoming mission. Hunters pick up Sunshot, Titan Sweet Business, and Warlocks will get their hands on Risk Runner, which comes in particularly handy for the Ark boss at the end of the Inverted Spire. 9. Own the Crucible First up, high flyers die faster than ever. With less players, there are less distractions, so anyone floating through the air is a little more than a giant dangling target. Stay low and punish those who don't. Second, cautious use of cover. In terms of both combat and movement is now vital. You need to plan every run from point to point in terms of firing angles, both incoming and outgoing, and combine dynamic improvisation and opportunism with constant strategic awareness. These are going to be more drawn out, medium range battles, and that's the order of the day. Thirdly, and most importantly, never lone wolf it. In the original Destiny Crucible, the larger scale chaos would allow one-man armies to thrive. Now you absolutely have to buddy up to maximise attack and defence. And an important note about power ammo when it does drop. Just like Countdown, in a huge change from the first game, only the player who grabs the ammo will actually get any. No more knock-on benefit for players who happen to be hanging around nearby. This means two things. One, power weapon use is now far more limited than before, and such guns should be saved for real tactical advantages rather than spammed as soon as you get access to them. Two, rapidly locking down the power ammo is easier than before, and something that can give you a huge momentum advantage if you split your team quickly enough to do it. 10. Play on the final day of the Destiny 2 beta to visit the farm. As a special final day treat on July 23rd, we're all going to get a chance to see new social space, the farm. Yep, a greener version of the tower awaits, complete with football and chickens, so don't miss the last day of the beta to go exploring. If you're hungry for more Destiny 2 beta coverage, hit subscribe for more gaming news, reviews and previews right here on GamesRadar+.